August is nearly over. The people back from holiday are tanned with blistered thumbs and a wallet of snaps and a little jaw de vivre which is contraband. Whose stamina is enough to face the annual wait for the annual spree. Whose memories are stamped with specks of sunshine like faded fleur de lis. Now the till and the typewriter call the fingers. The workman gathers his tools for the eight-hour day. But after that, the solace of films or football pools or of the gossip or cuddle, the moments of self-glory or self-indulgence, blinkers on the eyes of doubt. The blue smoke rising and the brown lace sinking in the empty glass of stout. Most are acceptors, born and bred to harness and take things as they come. But some refusing harness and more who are refused it would pray that another and a better kingdom come. Which now is sketched in the air or travestied on slogans written on chalk or tar on stucco or plasterboard, but in time may find its body, immense bodies, its law and order in their hearts accord, where skill will no longer languish nor energy be trammeled to competition and graft, exploited and subservience, but no allegiance to an utterly lost and daft system that gives a few at fancy price their fancy lives. While well, 99 in the 100 who never attend the banquet must wash the grease of ages off the knives. And now the tempter whispers, but you also have the slave owner's mind would like to sleep on a mattress of easy profits to snap your fingers or a whip and find servants or horries ready to wince and flatter and build with their degradation your self-esteem. What you want is not a world of the free in function, but a niche at the top, the skimmings of the cream. And I answer, that is largely so, for habit makes me think victory for one implies another's defeat, that freedom means the power to orders, and that in order to preserve the values dear to the elite, the elite must remain a few. It is so hard to imagine a world where the many would have their chance without a fall in the standard of intellectual living and nothing left that the highbrow cared about. Which fears must be suppressed? There is no reason for thinking that if you give chance to people to think or live, the arts of thought or life will suffer and become rougher and not return more than you could ever give. And now I relapse to sleep, to dreams perhaps, and reaction where I shall play the gangster or the sheikh, kill for the love of killing, make the world my sofa, unzip the women and insult the meek, which fantasies no doubt are due to my private history, matter for the analyst. But the final cure is not in his past dissecting fingers, but in a future of action, the will and fist of those who abjure the luxury of self-pity and prefer to risk a movement without being sure if movement would be better or worse in a hundred years or a thousand when their heart is pure. None of our hearts are pure. We always have mixed motives, our self-deceivers. But worst of all deceits is to murmur, Lord, I am not worthy. And lying easy, turn your face to the wall. But may I cure that habit? Look up and outwards and may my feet follow my wider glance. And no doubt to stumble then to walk with the others and in the end with time and luck to dance. <laughs>